When I give a gift, I like giving ones that are special, unique and personal. Photoshop is perfect for this. I use my trusty Photoshop skills to make my own gifts sometimes. And one of my favorites was a fantastic photo album filled with all sorts of memories of myself and a loved one. From vacations to nights out and snapshots of our lives together. When I choose photos for such a project, I always jazz them up a little bit to give them that special touch. This next technique will teach you how to add some flair to your own photos without spending a ton of time. Plus, you'll also learn a few things about Photoshop and how professionals work. Let's get to it. Here we have a lovely photo that's perfect for this activity. As you know, Photoshop is an incredibly versatile program and we could potentially spend hours on this photo, but here's what I suggest. Let's make certain parts of the image stand out, say the emoji. To target a specific area, professionals like to work with selections. Let's focus on that for a few minutes. A selection allows you to isolate a certain part of the layer and work on it without affecting anything else. One of my favorite selection tools is the Quick Selection tool, Hotkey W. I suggest you go to the toolbar, click and hold, and make sure you've activated the right one. This works like a brush, so it will be fairly easy to get up and running with it. Adjust your size from the options bar. I suggest a value of about 30 to 40 pixels. Enable this feature called Enhance Edge. It will give you a better result. Now click and hold, say over the red part of the watermelon. Just like that you've made the selection. These black and white dots are popularly called the marching ants and they tell you that you have a selection active on the canvas. So again that's the marching ants, a funny name for it. Let me switch to the brush tool, hotkey B, so you can better understand why selections are useful. With a big large brush, I'll quickly go over this area. Really sloppy stuff, no finesse about it, right? But notice how the rest of the project is not affected. I'm only painting inside my selection. That's incredibly powerful because you gain speed, but also confidence. You don't have to worry about missing something as long as you start with a good selection. And when you want to get rid of your selection, hit Ctrl D, where the D stands for deselect. Or you can go to the top menu to select. From here, Click on the second option and now you can continue working. I already used Ctrl D so this is grayed out. So that's selections for you, a great way to target a specific part of an image. We destroyed our photo but let's use the history panel to go back in time. We could also use Ctrl Z but I'd rather show off this panel. You can find it here in this narrow column but if you can't manage, go to the top menu to window. From here, click on History. In this panel, you'll see Photoshop has recorded your every step. Click on this entry from this long list and we'll be good to go. Activate the Quick Selection tool again, Hotkey W, so we can practice a bit more. Say we want to grab these blue bricks on the right side of the image. Check your brush size and make sure it's appropriate. Not too big, not too small. Then start painting over it. Inevitably, you'll see Photoshop is gonna go overboard with it. Don't worry though, you don't have to deselect with Ctrl D. This is fairly normal. What you have to do is help Photoshop understand what you wanna focus on. If you don't wanna include these flowers outlines, you'll have to use the quick selection tool in subtraction mode. That's a fancy word that basically tells Photoshop, hey, I don't want you to include this part in the selection. You can do that by holding down the ALT key or the OPTION key on a Mac. And if you look at your cursor, you'll now see a MINUS symbol. If I let go, we're back in the normal quick selection mode which expands our selection as we brush over different parts of the image, hence the plus. So again, holding down the ALT or OPTION key is the recommended method to remove parts of a selection. An alternative is to enable it from here but you'll have to constantly go back and forth between add to selection, the one with the plus symbol, and subtract from selection, the one with the minus. With that being said, let's hold down the alt or option key and go over this outline. 
The selection immediately changes as Photoshop gets a better sense of what you're trying to do. What I want you to understand is that getting a perfect selection takes time and effort. Though Photoshop has improved leaps and bounds over these last few years, you still need a lot of patience. And for all those small little parts that aren't included, let go of the Alt key and shrink your brush. Then activate the Zoom tool, Hotkey Z, and click a few times so you can really see what's going on. Now with a much smaller brush, you can include those small little bits of blue. Again, take your time with it. If you grab too much, hold Alt and remove any unwanted parts. So that's selections for you. Let me deselect with Ctrl D so we can switch gears. Zoom back out with Ctrl Zero or Command Zero on a Mac. To make this photo a bit more interesting, let's make everything black and white except the emoji. This means we need to make a selection of the entire image, but avoid the balloon. That's a lot of brushing and it's quite tedious. I have a better way of going about it. While still on the quick selection tool, increase the brush size and then go over the balloon. Initially, it may look great, but if you zoom in and check all the details, you might see you need to go over certain areas with a much smaller brush. Here's a tip for you. If you want to move around from side to side in Photoshop, hold the spacebar key. Now you can click, hold and move around. When you're done, let go of the spacebar and now you have the last used tool activated. Okay, say this is our lovely selection. We have it isolated, the balloon, right? We're telling Photoshop we want to work on it. But actually, we want to work on everything else except this area. The goal is to make everything black and white so the colorful emoji will stand out. Well, here's what professionals constantly do. They want to be as efficient as possible. We selected the emoji, but now we can go to the top menu to select. From this list, choose inverse. Notice what happened? I'll use the history panel to show you the before and after. This is our emoji selected and nothing else, right? After we inverse the selection, everything else is selected except the emoji. Notice the marching ants all around the canvas? This means this entire area is now selected. I'll explain in a second. For now, please go to the bottom of the layers panel and click on this yin yang looking symbol. From here, choose black and white. And there you go, job done! Everything is black and white except the emoji. Now, why did we work this way? Because it's easier to select a small part of the image and then tell Photoshop to select everything else except it. Basically, we've selected 20% of the image and then we told Photoshop, you know what, I actually want to work on the other 80% of the image. That's done through the inverse command and overall it's a smarter way to work. Let me show you one more. I'll click on the very first entry in the history panel so I can start from scratch. I'll quickly select the red part of this balloon. Next, I'll inverse the selection from the top menu. Next, I'll enable a black and white adjustment layer. It's as simple as one, two, three. All you have to do is decide what part of the image you want to stand out. Let me switch to another image. The forest is beautiful, but say we want to make the child and balloons really stand out. It's the exact same thing. We quickly go over these areas, in this case the jacket and the balloons. Now let's tell Photoshop we've changed our minds and that we actually want to target everything else. Select inverse and you'll notice the edge of the canvas shows the action that has taken place. Finally, apply that black and white effect. And just like that, you can see that this is extremely versatile and you can apply it to loads of situations. Going back to our initial image, don't think you always have to inverse your selection. For example, you can select a part of this graffiti like so. I'll do a very rough selection, so don't hold me to it. This is why this tool has quick in its name. You can use it at a fast pace. Okay, next I'll apply that black and white effect and be done with it. No inversing. It doesn't look all that great, but the idea is you have a lot of flexibility. Play around with the quick selection tool on your own photos as well as these ones and see what you can come up with. Now it's your turn. 
please take the time to go through all these steps. Paint over certain areas of your own choosing, just so you can really cement your learning about the brush tool and working on a mask. Being able to freely move around the project and adjust your settings based on your needs is something that will give you wings. What's important is you realize that this technique can be applied to a wide variety of situations. The sky is the limit. All you have to do is practice.